Hey there, good to see you. Today we're taking a look at a new collection of color-coded magnetic filters made by Maven. This collection of filters is now available for pre-order through a crowdfunded Kickstarter campaign. That campaign just went live today, and if you would like to check out more information about the campaign at any time during this video, there is a link down below in the video description you may use. So here on the table in front of me, I have a magnetized uh, lens cap, which has a really nice gray felt backing on it, which you could actually use as a white balance reference in a pinch if you don't have a card. Then next to it, I have a circular polarizer. This is a three-stop solid ND. This is a splash guard UV kind of filter, like the kind of filter you could, you know, leave on your lens in order to protect it or just keep uh, water or moisture from getting on the front of your lens. A 10-stop solid ND here and then a six stop solid ND. Now this collection also comes with a magnetized adapter ring and this adapter ring is the same diameter as the filters. And to mount these filters on a lens, you just simply mount the adapter ring on the front of a lens and then you're able to you know, just pop the filters on and off uh, the front of the lens as needed. Now, magnetized filters are nothing new. I mean, they're, you know, they've been around for a while now. They've become increasingly popular, I think, over the past few years. I've been seeing more companies uh, begin to uh, release magnetized filters. They seem to be popular with, uh, with photographers and videographers as well for their ease of use. But one of the unique things about this particular collection and the thing that really stands out are the colors. Because, I mean, really, when you think about it, in the world of photo and video, you know, pretty much every product is black or <laughs> like some shade of dark gray, right? So the color is very striking. And I think when you first, you know, look at these filters, you may think, uh, you know, maybe it's some kind of gimmick. It's a marketing thing. It's actually not true. Because as you may have noticed earlier when I was, you know, describing each one of the filters here, I didn't have to look at, you know, I didn't have to pick up each filter and, you know, look at the white type, you know, etched in into the side of the filter here in order to recognize each and to know what each filter was. I could distinguish each filter just purely using color. You know, if you're shooting video and you need a three-stop ND, well, you know it's the red one, right? Or perhaps you're shooting like a waterfall, you're a landscape photographer and you wanna slow down the water a good bit. Well, you would grab the gold filter because that is a 10-stop ND. Especially for me, because as I get older, my vision is, <laughs> isn't quite as good as it used to be. And uh, anything I can do to avoid having to, you know, squint at tiny little white type on the back of a filter, is all good with me. And by the way, if you, you know, if you don't know what the colors mean, you know, quite yet, or you forget, they do have it, you know, printed here on the back of the, of the filter. And the nice thing is, is that instead of using the old nomenclature of like ND8, ND64, ND1000, this uses plain language. So yeah, well, CPL is a bad example, but like the, uh, the three stop ND here, it actually says like three stop ND on the filter. Like you don't have to you know, guess what it is. So anyway, this video is a review of these filters. I received these filters a few weeks ago from Maven, and I took them on a trip with me out to New Mexico to do some landscape photography, and I use them for both uh, still photography and for video. I also put them to the test when it comes to their optics. How good are they optically when it comes to things like color cast and vignette? How well do they repel water? All that good stuff. But before we begin, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer and let you know that I am not affiliated with the developer of these filters. I have no relationship with them. This video is not paid for, it's not sponsored. I was simply sent these filters to test and to try out and to review, to provide feedback on, which I've been doing um, ahead of the, uh, of the Kickstarter campaign, which again, went live today, if you would like to check it out. And that's it. So everything that you're going to hear in this video is just my, you know, my honest opinion about uh, the quality of the filters, how well they perform, and whether I would recommend buying them. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the filters themselves. Let's talk about their design, their construction, the materials that have been used. All of these Maven filters are constructed using uh, lightweight aircraft grade quality aluminum. And then the glass on the inside is a special type of thin lightweight glass made by a company called AJC. And together, the glass and the aluminum makes a filter that is surprisingly light. I mean, these weigh approximately half as much as a normal traditional like threaded circular solid ND, which for some photographers and videographers you know, may not be that big of a deal, but to me it is because when I uh, go out and do landscape, landscape photography and I pack a camera bag, I'm always trying to conserve weight. Like I'm only trying to bring the, the lenses that I absolutely need 
So anything that I can do to reduce the amount of weight that I'm carrying in my bag is always a plus. The outside of each ring is textured. You can feel uh, like a little bit of a, of a pattern that's been cut into the aluminum here. And that's really nice when you're, say, like, you know, just gripping the filter like I am right now. But also if you're, say, like wearing gloves and, you know, filters tend to be a little small and a little fiddly. Well, it's nice to have that extra texture to be, uh, you know, holding on to. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about optics. Let's talk about the optical quality of these filters. Is there any color cast? Is there any vignette? Well, to test that out, I used my Canon EOS R5 to capture uh, some raw images with the exposure settings set exactly the same between a control image and a series of images, each one captured using a different solid ND. That way, when comparing the images, the only variable between them would be the filter. If there is any color cast or any change uh, in the image, it could only be attributable to the filter because everything else with the camera would be exactly the same. So here are the results. Here is a control image, and this is straight out of camera with no uh, edits. Nothing has been done to this image. And then here is the exact same image shot using the three-stop Maven Solid ND. Here it is with the six-stop Solid ND. And then finally, here is the 10-stop Solid ND. And, well, there's basically hardly any difference at all between the control image shot without uh, a filter and the images captured using a 3-stop, 6-stop, and 10-stop ND. Now, in case it's not clear why that's good, the reason it's good is because it means that the filter is not uh, affecting the authenticity of the colors in your image. It's not shifting them. It's not skewing them in any way. It's not changing their hue. And it's also not affecting the color temperature or the tint of your shot. Now, one little asterisk that I'll, that I'll pin on here, something you may have noticed in the comparison images that I just showed you. There is something about this particular uh, six stop solid ND that I received. It could just be you know the fact that this is a pre-production model. I don't know. For some reason in my test images, the six stop solid ND was just a touch warmer. It just seemed to add just a little bit of additional warmth. Uh, whereas the, the three stop and the 10 stop basically added nothing. Like, you know, these are just, you know, completely neutral. Next, I tested for vignette. Now, vignette, obviously, you know, the darkening around the corners and edges of the frame. Vignette is always a concern. Anytime you mount a filter on the front of a wide angle lens like this one here, this is a variable wide angle zoom, actually a uh, ultra wide angle zoom. This is the Canon RF 14 to 35 millimeter F4. Great lens. I use this lens quite a lot, actually, during a recent landscape photography trip to New Mexico. It pretty much lived on my R5 the whole time. If you'd like to know more about uh, this lens, I uh, reviewed it a while back. I'll link to that up here. So anyway, for the vignette test, I set the lens first to 16 millimeters. And again, this is a full frame camera here. And I just you know, pointed the camera at a blank wall and did something similar to the color cast test where I first captured a control image without a filter and then added the filter and the magnetic adapter to see if there was any additional vignette being created. And as you can see, for all intents and purposes, there is basically no difference between the two. I mean, the one with the ND may be just a little bit darker, I think possibly because the edges of the filter may have been blocking a little more light from, you know, kind of creeping in the side of the lens. But the point is, is that there's no additional like mechanical vignette at all. Like you don't see the edges of the filters. That's not a problem. And that's great news because no one wants, you know, additional vignette in their image that can't be easily corrected, you know, by applying a lens correction profile in Lightroom, um, you know, which accounts for the optical vignette of the lens that you're shooting with. So there's nothing more, there's nothing being added there that you really have to account for in post when you're editing. I also tested the coatings on these filters to see how well they repelled moisture. Like say you're out shooting and it's misty or there's light rain or you're shooting near a water source and you get, you know, water drops on the front of the filter. Well, the good news is, is that, you know, when they get wet and you use like a, a microfiber cloth to, uh, to clean them off, it basically cleans off all the water. All the water just beads up on the glass and it all comes off without any smearing, without any uh, watermarks or any problems like that. Nothing that's going to affect uh, the, uh, the quality of your image if the filter were to get wet. 
Now, as you may know, when you buy a circular filter, they always ask you to you know, choose a particular size. And that size is measured in millimeters and it refers to the, uh, to the diameter on the front of your camera lens. So for example, this one here is 82 millimeters and I can see right up here, it says 82 millimeters and your lens should, should have one as well. And the recommended thing to do whenever you're buying a circular uh, filter, especially if you wanna save some money, is to buy the largest uh, the largest size filter that you need. So for example, this lens here, again, this is uh, 82 millimeters, and I do not own any other lens in my collection that has a diameter size that is larger than 82 millimeters. So all of the filters that I received are 82 millimeters in size, which means that the adapter that came with the kit, I can just screw this right on to this lens and then you know pop a filter on and I'm good. But what about smaller diameter lenses like this one here? <laughs> this one is actually, this one actually has a 77 millimeter thread on the front. Well, what you could do and what I would actually not recommend, spoiler, is you know, going out and getting one of those like cheap aluminum step up rings and threading that onto the back of the magnetic adapter and then, you know, trying to put that on here. It really doesn't work well. I mean, it will work. It, it will do the job, but it's really not ideal because then you're having to, you know, try to like get the step up ring back off of the magnetic ring when you, you know, want to, you know, go back to your 82 millimeter or whatever. It's just a mess. So fortunately, Maven is also producing these, and these are magnetized step-up rings. So again, 77 millimeter filter thread on the front of this 14 to 35 here, and I can just screw this one on. And again, this is a separate ring. This is a, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't, you know, come with the kit with the rest of the filters. It has to be ordered and uh, purchased separately. But anyway, 77 millimeter to 82 millimeter uh, step-up ring magnetized on the front of the lens here. And then I can just do that. I can then just take this filter off and put it on the 82 millimeter like so. And back again. I mean, we could do this all day, right? And this is such a time-saving thing when you're out in the field shooting and you're switching lenses because you want to change focal lengths because all you have to do is just, you know, move the filter from one lens to another, swap out the lens, and you're good to go. So if you are considering this magnetized system here, I would highly recommend getting some of these uh, magnetic step-up rings as well, especially if you intend to use other lenses, if you intend to use multiple lenses with the same filters, definitely worth it. Okay, so let's wrap things up here. Overall, my impression of the Maven color-coded magnetic filters, I think they're fantastic. I think they're beautifully designed. They're beautifully manufactured very high quality and that goes for the glass inside of them as well uh, very neutral no color cast at all barely any difference between uh, an image shot without a filter and with a filter which is exactly what you want whenever you're buying uh, a filter i also love how thin and light they are because it really can make a difference when you're you know packing a heavy ca camera bag especially if you're out doing outdoor and landscape photography like i do and i also just have to say i love the colors. I mean, I know it may seem kind of gimmicky to some people, but I'm telling you, when you're out and you're, you know, kind of in a rush and the sun is setting and you're, <laughs> you're trying to get the shot, you know what I mean? The last thing you want is anything, anything getting in your way, any friction. The last thing that I know I want is like, you know, looking at filters and trying to figure out, you know, what strength a particular ND is or, you know, whether the filter I grabbed was a CPL or whether it was a solid ND, because sometimes, you know, it can be kind of hard to tell. And the colors just make it so easy. I think it's a really smart thing. And I mean, usually in a product review, there's almost always, you know, some negative, some con to help balance out the pros. But in this particular instance, there's there's really nothing negative to say. I think they're, uh, I think they're fantastic. So if you would be uh, interested in these, and if you are shopping for uh, some new filters, I would definitely recommend checking out the Kickstarter page for these filters and consider becoming a backer uh, of them, especially because you can save quite a bit of money. I think it's like 60% off MSRP if you um, if you purchase as part of the early bird uh, specials that are going on for uh, people who get in early. So uh, definitely check it out. You will find a link down below in the video description. Thanks to Maven for providing me with these filters and thanks to you for 
making it all the way to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. If you would like to see additional product reviews from me in the future, plus tutorials, I also um, bring you along for the experience of creating landscape images out in the field, if that is something uh, potentially of interest to you, then tap or click that red button below to subscribe to this channel. Also, while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, it really does help. And you can also sign up for my email newsletter over at my website, toddomini.com, where I keep you up to date on the latest. And I also send out some things by email uh, to my subscribers and to people who uh, are part of my email newsletter that don't end up here on my channel and you can only get by being part of that newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for it, I would encourage you to do so. Again, the link is down below in the description if you'd care to do so. That's it. Thanks so much. See you next time.